Guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Accelerate Life University, XLR8Life.com. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the motivation, the energy, the life, and all the success you really want and deserve? With no further to do, here's Coach Lou. Here's Coach Lou. All right, all right, guys. Good morning and welcome back to Breakthrough with Coach Lou. It is Monday morning and we are in the process of our F Fear series. Uh, I kind of renamed that as we went because I thought about it and I thought, you know, we really need to step up and boom, put a stop to fear in our lives. Put a stop to fear in our everyday lives. Put a stop to fear of our own decisions, fear of what's going on in the world. Fear, 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 fear. Media, media is bathing you in fear. Um, we're bathing each other in fear. Oh my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I just don't know what to do. I can't do anything because I don't know what's going to happen. And get your comments in this morning questions, guys. Uh, either location, whether you're on Facebook, uh, if you're watching on my personal page on Facebook, or if you are on our chat panel on the website, on the blog, please get some questions in, get your thoughts and comments in. I'm very, very curious to think of your, get your input on this. All right, today we're going to talk about what is fear. Really, really, what is this thing called fear? Okay, the truth of the matter is, if you get nothing else out of what we talk about today, fear is designed to get us to respond, to make a decision of flight, fight, flee, or freeze. Okay, fight, flee, or freeze. Okay, what do you do when you get in a fearful state? And you might go, well, what are you talking about? Okay, if a bear comes running at you, um, chances are if he's coming at you and you know he's locked on you, you're probably going to be ready to flee, climb a tree, get out of the way, hide, do something. Okay, you're probably not going to go, come on, Mr. Bear, let's go. Let's have a fist fight here. You're probably going to lose that deal. What if Mr. Bear has grabbed onto your child and is driving, dragging your child off? Are you going to run away? Are you going to stand there and watch? No, you're going to go over there and you're going to beat the ever-living hell out of Mr. Bear and you're going to save your child's life at all costs, right? If you're any kind of parent. Okay, so we got flee or fight down. What about freeze in Mr. Bear scenario? You're walking around a corner in the woods and you're out hiking. And, oh, shoot, there's a bear with her cub. She's Mrs. Bear. And you go, all right, she didn't really see me. I don't really want to crackle the logs and, and step on branches and get her attention. I don't want to spook her. What do I do? I freeze. Stay put. Mrs. Bear and the cub walk off after they graze for a minute and everything's good. So which is best? Well, I don't know. It depends on the scenario, guys. That is the cool part of what we're talking about with this fear. Fear is not necessarily your enemy, okay? Fear is designed to protect us. Hear me on this. Fear is designed to protect us in our old reptilian brain. The part of us that protects us and keeps us safe is that side that fear goes, hey, there's, there's something to pay attention to here, something to think about. Be careful. And don't walk off the edge of that cliff. It's 100 feet down. You're going to get hurt. Don't be stupid. You've got to fear the edge of that cliff. Okay? Doesn't mean in life you don't get right up on the edge and take chances. But, you know, let me ask you a question. What would fear do for you if you're going to scale down that 100-foot cliff and you're, you're, you're a repeller? Or you want to get from the top to the bottom. Let's not even say you're a repeller. What do you do? Well, safety harness, repelling gear. That can be the most amazing experience. But the fear tells you you got you got to tie off so that if you slip, you don't die. You could free climb it. You could. And if you have protective gear that'll catch you if you slip, that's that's fear telling you to be smart. Okay, to go do that without any gear, chances are you might not live to see the end of the day. 
Okay, that's the side that fear protects us. That reptilian brain side, okay, and we like to call it the reptilian brain, but it's the side of your brain that says, hey, protect this, protect the body, protect your life, uh, be alert, all that stuff for safety. That's all it does. It doesn't rationalize. Now you look at that big roller coaster and the reptilian brain says, F no. And the other side, he, the adventurer goes, I just saw that thing run 50 times and nobody fell out and died, but it is scary. Okay, that's the side of you you use when you go, okay, how do I, how do I harness this fear? Oh, this is exciting. I'm scared, but I'm going to do it anyway. But your reptilian brain tells you you don't do it without a safety harness on. You don't go, leave my harness off of me. I want to fall out and experience a free fall. Okay. So fear is good when faced with a life-threatening or urgent situation because it gets you a fast, explosive response. In an emergency situation, if you freeze, people's lives are at stake. Okay, in a situation where, you know, if you're not seen, you're not in danger, freezing might be a good response. Okay, the problem with fear is that it can be perceived or created and not real and has this paralyzing effect. Okay, that's when you got a problem. Okay, you get up in the morning and, uh, go to work and you know you, you you're not making it you financially we're, a lot of us are not making it right now i get it okay and now this uh, this a whole can of worms we can get into that to make it you've got to be able to offer something of value but say you have that already down you you already do more than you need to at work you're already phenomenal you really are worth more not just because minimum wage went up and you stand there and go, you want some fries with that. Okay, I'm not talking about being a slug and you know just because you show up, you should get more money. I'm talking you're a productive person, but you know, you're know getting paid the same much as the same amount as the slugs are getting paid, but you're, you're rocking the job. And you wake up and you know, I've really got to talk to my boss. I'm, I'm, I'm not paying my bills. I'm paying minimum on my credit cards. My debt's going up. Uh, you know, I really am a good worker. I really do deserve more. But I'm afraid, what if I ask for a raise and the boss fires me? Mm -hmm. What? Okay, you're great. You're phenomenal. You do a better job than the rest. And you think your boss is going to fire you for going in and asking for a raise. I'll tell you what your boss might fire you for is becoming just like the rest of them because you have no initiative. Now your boss might not tell you yes immediately, or there might not, yeah, there might be a hundred things that could happen. You could get fired. Who knows? Maybe your boss don't like you. These things I don't know the specifics, but the chances of that fear of oh my god, if I ask for a raise, the boss is going to fire me. That's not a very founded fear, but it is a very real feeling that maybe a million point two one point two million people wake up this morning and go, oh my god, I wish I had the balls to ask for a raise. Hmm. Or I wish I had the guts to ask for a promotion. Or I wish I could just go down to the county and file my business. Or, you know, go online and file my business and just say to my job that I hate and it's barely getting me by and I know I could make this dream work. But, well, you know, what if it doesn't? So what if it doesn't? Would you rather go full out after your dream? Or would you rather sit on your butt and stay in one place? Okay. Now, I don't sit here in judgment like Almighty God right here. God judges, I don't. I don't sit here in judgment. I do the same things, guys. I do the same things. Oh, what if I do this and it doesn't work out? Okay. Guess what? I haven't really worked for anybody since I've been 18 years old. There's pluses to that and there's challenges to that. Did I have easier schedules or tougher schedules? No, I've worked my guts out over the years. But I also took some major steps at times that did the one decision made more change than years of hard work. But yet I was afraid to make that decision. Think about that. Think about some of these things that the fear stops you and destroys most people's dreams. Fear. 
the thing designed to protect you. That thing I just said was good. Now it's not so good. It's holding you back. It's hurting you. And you're like, well, great. Um, which is it? Both. It's a double-edged sword. You got to harness fear for you, not have it control you. And you're like, oh, Lord, this sounds like work. It is. And we're not going to do all that today because we got a couple more, a few more shows this month where we're going to dig into the mechanics of it. But let me ask you, would you like to take control of fear and make it an asset rather than your enemy? Let me ask you that again. Would you rather make fear your asset than your enemy? Do you think that would increase the quality of your life, increase your ability to, to make decisions, increase your belief, and take your stress level down? Okay. This is another thing, and, and God bless everybody in Israel. You know, who, nobody, nobody should be attacked. I don't care which side of any of that you're on, but you don't just start launching missiles at, at, at people. That's ridiculous. But the fear that that is put into everybody, oh, here it goes. Here's World War III. We're already, there's already a war going on that we have no business being involved in. And I don't care, again, how you feel about that. I, I don't feel like people should be invaded, etc. Sometimes you let people work stuff out. What if your kids are fighting? And I know this isn't the greatest thing. But greatest example, but what if your kids are fighting and you know you step in every time and you, you shut it down and the things never get resolved? What if you let them work it out and fight it out for a while and learn their lesson? Okay, but my point to this is with all these wars spurring out and fires and floods and everything else, you know, in a world, and you know, I'm not going to make this into a religious sermon, but in a world where so many people are turning their vision away from spirituality, I'm not even going to say turning their back on God, but in some, some cases, yes, no matter how you call your God or your creator, many people are turning their backs, whether you're Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're uh, Muslim, you, you see people of your own faith just kind of abandoning it, right? And you might say, well, they're all, we're all enemies. No, you're really not. Most religions don't teach war and hate, okay? Most of them teach love and compassion. They're very similar in structure if you look at it and you can kind of go, oh, they kind of call God by a different name or their creator by a different name, but you know, they still kind of have the same basis. You do the right things. You, you treat your family right. You, you know, just whatever. I'm not going to go into a big sermon on that this morning. But my, my whole point to this is the fear that this is bringing everything you got. But my, and my point there was all that's going on, do you think that your God, your creator, might be sending you a message when areas of land just go up into flames? Floods are happening. Climate change, I'm not so convinced about that. I'm a little more convinced that somebody's pissed off upstairs, no matter how you call them. And it's time to open your eyes. And I'm not saying, you know, walk around and read scriptures to each other out of whatever book you read. I'm talking about the way you live your life and having the faith over fear. There's my real point to what I was just talking about. I mean, we could go in hours into discussions and and so on and so forth and, you know, have people get heated up because of some of the differences in the religions. That's not what I'm here to bring to you this morning. What I'm here to bring to you is faith over fear. Whether it's your faith in God, your faith in, if you call universe your God, whether it's your faith in yourself, that you know, I have faith that I always figure this out, as opposed to I'm afraid I'm not going to figure this out. Do you, do you see? These are two F words, okay, that are antithesis of each other. Faith and fear. Wow. The big difference is faith has I in it. You have to participate in faith. Fear, you can just allow it to roll over you. To have faith, you have to step up from within. Faith from your creator. Faith from yourself. Faith from your past where you know, I have faith, I can do this. I have overcome stuff. 
It's really what today is, is faith or fear. Which do you want? Do you want to walk around fearful 24-7? Or do you want to have faith that we're going to get past it? You'd have to have your head in the sand in the days and have it buried in the sand right now to not realize there's some problems in our world. There's some major problems, okay? And I'm not here to dump fear on you. But I am here to say that, you know, you, you can't just kumbaya it away and go, oh, it's all going to be good. We're all going to get government checks and live in towers and have chips in our wrists where we can swipe to go in and robots are going to feed us. Bullshit! That ain't happening, okay? But also, you don't want to be walking around in total fear all the time that, you know, we're going to be annihilated in the next week. So... How do you do that? How do you overcome fear with faith? And that's whether it's your religious faith, your faith in yourself, your faith in action, whatever it is, they're two really cool words that when you play on the words and you add I as in faith, there is no I in fear. Fear is something that's pushed on you. Fear is something you allow where faith is something you participate in. Hmm, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, didn't think you were in for this this morning. But I want to get you guys past fear. Stop fearing everything. Now, it doesn't mean be stupid. Don't try to cross I-4 in rush hour traffic on foot and go, I don't fear getting run over. I'm going to be okay. You're going to be roadkill. Okay, that's what fear is for. You don't approach the bear and poke it on the nose and say, I'm going to poke you, bear, and think he's not going to swat you back and claw you one. Okay. It's not about being stupid. It's about having the faith that if you do the right things, you're going to get the outcomes you're after. Okay. Next week, we're going to cover what fear actually is, you know, how it responds in your body, how it triggers. And the week after, we're going to talk about how fear overcomes and controls you. And then the, fo and the following week, we're going to break through fear. And uh, yeah, this was the week we covered what fear actually is. And then the final week of the month, we're going to hit on what lies on the other side of fear. When you break through fear, okay? So what is fear? Some people say it's F everything and run. Other people use it as an acronym, go face everything and rise. So remember, fear has a purpose. It alerts you. Okay, there's something wrong. There could be something wrong. There's something you have to pay attention to. You might have to fight. Bear's dragging your child off. You're not going to just let it happen. You might have to run. The bear's running at you and you can climb up a tree real quick and get away from him. That's probably your best bet. Or you can freeze. Bear didn't see you, so stay still for a minute. You're good. Bear's going to go away. Okay, we talked about real fear versus perceived fear. What is the real fear? Real fear is the bear is actually running at you. Perceived fear is I'm never going to go hiking because there could be a bear in the woods. Okay? So, you know, you, you, you got to think back now. What did we talk about? Bear chasing you. I'm afraid to go talk to my boss about a raise even though I deserve it. And I'm an amazing person. Remember, you got to be that amazing employee before you go in for that raise. Or the boss is going to fire me. Okay? Which is real? The bear in your face is real. The idea of your boss firing you just because you ask for a raise is probably just a fear-based, absolutely overtaking of your emotions that really isn't real. So I have a tool for you on this. The best way to overcome fear and this, this can happen in a split second, or this you can take a few minutes to think about it. What is it? And you might go, well, what do you mean? So when something alerts you, when the fear alerts you, that's a step one, right? Uh-oh, I heard a crackling in the woods. Is that a bear or is it a squirrel? Okay, you need to pay attention. But ask yourself real quick, what does this really mean? Okay, there's some wildlife nearby. Okay, that's not as bad as the bear is going to rip me limb to limb. Um, big difference there. Then you take it from there. Okay, if it is Mr. Bear, fight, flight, or freeze. 
If it's Mr. Squirrel, you go, oh, how cute. It's a little baby squirrel. Carry on. There was no reason to get all the adrenaline flowing in your body, right? Okay. So let me give you an example that you, you, you might really, really run with with this. What does this really mean? Public speaking, okay? Step one is you're going to be fearful, okay? It's scary, especially if you don't do it, okay? Even if you do it a lot. I can't tell you I always get up in front of a group and I'm just like, yeah, Mr. Cool here. Sometimes I'm like, no, oh, no, oh God, what if they don't like me? Oh, God. You're going to gonna feel these fears, guys, okay? This is not... You know, you're not a bad person if you have some fear or you get nervous or you're, you know, you're heightened, you know, but you get out there and you hit that stage and you start to talk. <clears throat> you break through that fear and you might be, hi, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coach Lou and I'm here to talk to you about health and wellness. Okay. So I'm going, to, I'm going to, along with our example here, give you a real world example. Years ago, when I wasn't quite as adept with camera or speaking, um, I got invited to speak in an event at a church, a health and wellness event. So I go in there and one of the other wellness centers that uh, I'm friends with and, you know, the, the owner and, and actually went to them and they have a great acupuncture program and et cetera. Um, they're the ones that actually initially said, hey, why don't you invite Lou and hey, would you like to do this? And I'm like, yeah. So I'm, I, may, I type out this speech of what I'm going to speech on. Okay. I get up there and I'm nervous because, you know, some other speakers have gone and they're, hey, they're pretty good. I don't know. I'm, I'm scared. And it was just, I was a little out of my element, et cetera. And I get up there. And I start kind of going through my speech. And I said something, and all the crowd resonated, but it was something that just kind of came through me at the time. So I took my paper, I flipped it over, slammed it on the podium, and I said, guys, I had this thing all typed out and ready to deliver to you, but I think that, and that, forgive me if you don't believe the same as I do, whatever I said, I think God's got a different plan for me today. I think that there's, I, I need to deliver what you need and answer your questions. And we just started with this, this going and da, 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 you know, and it was like, I had like a 15, 20 minute time slot. An hour into it, I got one of the pastors going, we got to cut you. We got to stop this, you know, and, and, and people are like asking questions and we're in this flow state. Okay, see, that's the doing in the breakthrough. So step one was the fear. I had the fear. I prepared. I got up there. I started doing it. I broke through the reasoning of what I'm, why I'm supposed to be there. I broke through the fear because I realized there was a purpose for me to be there. Whatever reason, whether you call it divine, whether you call it just the, something people needed, whether you call it a flow, the universe, however you call it, something clicked where it started to flow. I'm not thinking of how afraid I am and what part of my speech I'm on. I'm done. I flipped that bitch over. Okay, excuse the language, guys, but sometimes we need some impact here. So get to that point. Well, now I'm feeling like a million bucks. Pastor comes over and says, uh, Lou's going to be back at his booth. Uh, I know you guys want to, you know, talk more with them. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been amazing. I just, I do have to get the other speakers up. And I go back to my booth and I got people lined up. Do you think I felt empowered from what was initially fear? Yes. It was the most, one of the most empowering experiences of my life because it was like, oh my God, people really did care what I had to say. Why? Because I cared what they needed. I broke through the fear. I didn't sit up there and go, well, I got to read my speech because I can't, I can't feel this otherwise. I didn't know how, how well or how not well I could feel the questions in the presentation. I didn't know. I had to have faith. Probably easy to do in a church, but uh, in all reality, I had to have faith that I could do it. See, that's the deal there. But if you want to take today's tool, where did that fit in that story? 
Okay, the fear was there. It made me get prepared. But where was the real point where I put in the tool of what does this really mean? It was about when I started and I looked and I started getting questions and I realized what I thought I'm here for is not necessarily exactly what I'm here for. The overall was to inspire people to take better care of their health. But I asked myself, what does this really mean? This means I need to just go with it, put down the written speech stuff and go with it. What it really meant is I was there to have an effect on somebody's life or multiple people's lives that would give them a positive outcome. Not did I read my speech and cover every bullet point. And the real meaning of it was that this was empowering. Okay, the gift back to me, maybe I helped somebody that day, maybe I didn't. Maybe I helped lots of people that day. I would love to believe I had effects long lasting. But the reality is the gift that I walked out of there with was feeling empowered. So I learned the tool of going from fear to being empowered. Okay, not that we haven't learned that many times in different realms, but that was a defining moment for sake of giving you an, uh, an example of where it kind of fit perfectly to what I'm teaching today. So I love it when I got a story I can give you that you can kind of go, oh yeah, I get how we do this. Because we can sit there and talk logistics all day long. <coughs> and if we don't carry beyond just the logistics to where it becomes part of you, where you embody it, you're not going to live it. Okay, next week, we can learn how to uh, how fear controls you. I'll review that a uh, week after we're going to break through that fear, and then we're going to go into what lies after fear. So while we're here, while I got your attention, and I hope I have your attention, Coach Lou Inner Circle is live and functioning. Okay, what I need to do here is I'm going to put some links down below for you to take October's Coach Lou Inner Circle live meeting on me. Okay, you don't have to join yet. I wanted to give you that ability to get on the live meeting with me. That's limited to like 100 people, guys, because of seating. Um, Coach Lou Inner Circle is weekly trainings that are a little more in-depth than what we do on the show here. It is a monthly live meeting where we all meet live on Zoom and you know, can interact, ask, ask questions, etc. We have a private Facebook group. We have all kinds of cool stuff that we do. We do a book review each month. Some of the greatest minds have written some of the most amazing books. Uh, people like Eddie Milet, Dean Graziosi, Tony Robbins. So let's read those together. Not literally, not sitting in the same room, but let's read them and then decipher what it is, what are the main takeaways, and summarize that each month. Let's do a book. Okay. So that means you get an extra little meeting too. So it's a great community to be part of. Not not a very minimal investment, but first one's free. Sign up on it. I'm going to put the links in. Jump in. Give 100%. See if it's for you. I'd love to have you as part of the family. So in the meantime, till next week, live with faith, energy, passion. Always live your dreams. Remember, faith was in there, not fear. I did not say live with fear. I say live with faith, energy, passion. Always live your dreams. Be blessed. See you next week, guys. Have an absolutely amazing day. This is Coach Lou signing off in just a second here. Have a great day. Ready to take it to the next level? Next level. Tune in to XLR8Life.com for our live shows, encore presentations, life-changing courses, and live coaching with Coach Lou himself. As Coach Lou always says, live with faith, energy, love, passion, and always live your dream.